Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're talking about a really impressive watch that has a battery life longer than any battery I've seen on a watch with GPS and heart rate and Bluetooth and everything that you really want from a fitness watch. And by long battery life, I mean on the order of a year or possibly even indefinitely thanks to the solar charging on this watch. So there's a lot to talk about. This is the Casio G-Shock GBD H1000, another kind of clunky name there, but it kind of goes with the large watch there, here. And there's a lot to talk about with this watch from the Bluetooth notifications to the heart rate, to the GPS, to the thermometer, the compass in there. There's really a lot going on in a classic G-Shock body here, which is allowing you to to have a very rugged watch that goes really off the grid and we'll talk a lot more about that in this video to see if this watch actually performs as well as it claims to and i want to start off with a physical tour of this device just to show you guys what we're talking about get on the same page here all right so starting off on the front you'll see there's an lcd display there very high contrast very easy to see in any lighting at all even if there's just moonlighting outside i find that i can see it very easily and if for some reason it's too dark to see that maybe you're indoors or something you can always hit the little light button on the top right and you have a backlight on here so you can see it during any hours of the day of course you also have as you can see on the bottom right there it is solar powered so you have a rechargeable battery in here but the solar panel in there allows it to charge while you're outside i think they said this will last indefinitely if you have two hours of sunlight per week shining on this and if you're using this not with gps of course with gps uh, the battery life should only last about 18 hours 14 to 18 hours is the range they're giving and if you don't have any solar power but you're still using notifications on here and you're using the heart rate sensor it should last about one year without the solar assistance there so definitely a very very impressive battery uh, especially if you're trying to not use gps all the time even with gps that's a very impressive battery life now on the front, you'll see it has very large bezels all the way around here. And these are all very functional. So you see they're all in very strategic locations, so they're equidistant. And they protect the mineral glass screen, which is already very strong. And that way, if you ever hit a, you know, you hit a rock or you do something, you know, this is supposed to be a very rugged watch. If you're outside and you hit something, these, which are made of resin, are definitely going to be very strong and protecting your watch pretty much on any angle you have. And you'll notice that the buttons are also recessed, so you shouldn't have any accidental touches by hitting stuff. And there are five buttons on here. Four of them are plastic, so you see one on, uh, on the four corners right there. And then the fifth one is your run button right on the side. And I'll show you the interface tour in just a second, but you'll see that the watch overall is definitely very large, very thick right here. And it weighs, you know, significantly more than some other watches I have. So comparing it to uh, like the Galaxy Watch Active 2 or the Suunto 7, uh, you'll see that this weighs, you know, significantly more than them. The case is, uh, it depends on which way you look at it because it's not really a perfect circle here, but it's about 55 millimeters. So again, a very large case. The straps are not replaceable. So, I mean, technically you could take them off with a screw right there, but uh, you're really gonna be getting what you get here when you buy this watch. So there are four different colors. There's this one, which is a, a white and black and a little bit of a chartreuse right there. There's also an all black one. Uh, there's a red one, and then there's a black and red one as well. They all look really cool. I think that, uh, you know, for most people looking for a G-Shock watch, one of those colors should be attractive. When we flip this watch over to the back, you'll see we have a stainless steel back right there, and it has a heart rate sensor in the middle. And then on the right side, we have a small charging port right there, three little nodes uh, to connect the charger that's included in the box. And it charges up fairly quickly. And like I said, you really won't be using that very often at all. On, the either, on either side, the top and bottom here, the little chartreuse uh, bands right there are kind of just to make it fit your wrist better. So you can see it's a little rounder when we put it this way. You have a little radius on the inside. Makes it more comfortable, helps it from wobbling around on your wrist too much. So you can see I shake my wrist around and it never really moves or slides anywhere. It's not especially tight right now. This is a very comfortable fit. And that's something very impressive with the design. I, I like how the engineers at Casio made sure that this would not slide around on your wrist because it is so heavy. And something to note about the band right here, it's not necessarily the most comfortable band. It's comfortable to me, but it's not going to be the softest silicone rubber we've seen on other bands. But I think a lot of that is supposed to be the durability. So if you scratch this, it's less likely to tear, less likely to break. And it is generally you know, comfortable enough for, for most use. 
Now keep in mind, this watch is a G-Shock watch, which is historically a watch that is extremely durable. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. It's going to be ready and able to do anything you're doing. Uh, if you're gonna break this, you're probably gonna break your wrist with it, honestly. So this is water resistant for 20 bars. So that's about 200 meters. So if you're diving, uh, if you're just like swimming around, it really is not a problem at all. I was surfing with this all week long and it, I mean, not only is the battery still alive, you're also probably charging it with the solar panel on there. And on top of that, I didn't have to worry about accidental presses. So I didn't have any accidental presses on a touch screen. And it also is completely fine with being in water uh, for pretty much any amount of time. This has, uh, it's obviously shock resistant as well. So if you land and you hit something, uh, you don't have to worry about this breaking in most circumstances, at least, you know, it's much less likely to break than almost any other watch I have. Getting into the sensors on this watch, this has three different types of GPS. I'll pop them up on the screen right there. It also has an optical heart rate sensor capable of VO2 max. It has a pedometer, so you're based on accelerometer in there. It has a magnet inside, so a compass. Uh, it has a pressure sensing for barometer. It helps you determine the altitude as well. Uh, and it has a thermometer and it has Bluetooth. So this watch has a lot of sensors in board, but let's test them out and see how accurate they actually are. All right, so we're outside right now. I'm gonna test out the pedometer, but first you can see what I was saying that it's really easy to see this in bright daylight and also in darker shadows as well because it's really high contrast. But we're starting out at 7,619 steps. I'm gonna walk 1,000 and see where we're at. All right, so 1,000 steps later and we're at 8,603, as you can see there on the top. So it looks like we're off by about 16 steps out of 1,000. So testing out the thermometer, it says 79 degrees at the top right there. I know for a fact that in here it's 78 degrees right now. So that's reasonably accurate if you're not wearing it. I took this off about 20 minutes ago. On my wrist, it was saying 85 degrees. So there's really no chance of accuracy there. Now looking at the compass, it says we're facing south, southwest. And so if we turn it, we should be getting south right around there. Now let's compare it to an actual compass. We'll see right here that it is actually surprisingly accurate. All right, so to test out the GPS, I first went on a run uh, near a river, but I was un unable to get any GPS signal on the G-Shock while I was able to get GPS on the Sunto. So I had to relocate until I found a spot that I could get signal in a more open area. And you'll see right here, the GPS actually did an exceptional job in my opinion. So if we zoom in on the map here, you can see exactly where I ran. And if we look at the the GPS view here, so the actual satellite view, uh, you'll see that it looks a lot better. You can see exactly where I ran on the sidewalks. Uh, there's really no drunk wandering at all. Everything, I crossed the road right there. You can see exactly where I ran. I turned around at that road. It did an excellent job of detecting where I ran. Uh, and so overall, the GPS was extremely accurate. Now, looking at the heart rate, if we go down here, again, I really hate the heart rate graph here. Uh, it's really hard to read this and get any meaningful information out of it. Uh, but we can look at the average and the maximum heart rate. So the average of 153, the max of 171. Now, if we look at what the Sunto is saying, which the Sunto uh, is you know, relatively accurate from my testing in the past, uh, we'll see that the Sunto heart rate was an average of 171 and a high of 186. So it looks like the G-Shock might have been registering slightly low. All right, now, now let's get into an interface tour and this can be a little bit confusing. The interface is not the most intuitive because this is not a touch screen. Everything on here is going to be controlled with the five buttons on the outside. And I wanna start off on essentially what is your home screen right here. And you have a couple options from your home screen. You have several different displays. So if we hit the display button, this will toggle through different displays and then the mode button will toggle through different modes. And each mode has several different displays. From the home screen, from the home mode, we can tap on display and go into a display that shows us our daily steps, how many steps we have uh, each day within a week. And then we can go to another display that shows us our VO2 max and our, 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 our training status. Another one will show us our monthly goals and our achievements right here. Then we'll go to another one that has the heart rate and the time. And then again, we can have the, the time and a global time if you wanna see somewhere else in the world. And then we bring back to the main home screen, the first one that is by default set on this watch. So that's the first mode. The second mode, we can go into the heart rate and this only has two different screens. So we have one that shows us a graph and one that just reads our heart rate individually. Because I'm not wearing it, it's not showing the heart rate right now. And you can change the heart rate in settings. I'll show you that in a second, but it could read continuously or only when you're on this screen if you're trying to save battery. The next mode is just an interval workout and you can change the settings on your phone. Uh, and this will allow you to go through several different intervals. I have it set for 10 minutes. There's only one set right now. If we hit the mode button, you'll get to stopwatch. Again, this one does not have multiple displays. So hitting the display button does nothing. 
The start button will obviously start your stopwatch. It'll also pause it. Uh, or if you want to have it continue and just take a lap, you can hit the lap button on the bottom right. Going to the next mode, this one is kind of your orienteering, uh, your barometer. This one tells you your temperature on the top as well. If we hit display, it brings us to a compass. We'll test the accuracy of that out in a second. If we hit the display again, it brings us to an altimeter, tells us the altitude we're at and the difference in altitude if you're going up or downhill. Now going on to the next mode, this one is activity. And if we hit the middle button there, it brings us into the log of the different workouts we have. Using the left two buttons as the up and down arrows, we can go down and check out any individual workout. So one that I had uh, just yesterday morning, we, if we hit the, the middle button on the side, it'll bring us into the run and we can look at the details for each individual lap and it'll tell us about our heart rate or the overall details, including the distance, the time, the pace, uh, your cadence, your ascent, your calories. And if we hit the back button on the bottom left, it brings us back to where we were. Uh, then training status, this one is going to tell you uh, essentially just some basic stuff about your training status. So if we hit the display button, it shows us our VO2 max right now. It shows us our recovery time. And those are the three screens you have with this mode. Pressing the mode button one more time, it brings you to notifications. And if you hit the OK button, you can go through all the notifications you have on your phone. And something I notice is these are generally a little bit on the clunky side. The notifications are not the easiest to look at and interpret. I am, I'm getting a lot of like Google weather ones. Anytime the temperature changes, I get a new notification. So if we hit the uh, OK button on the side, it'll just open up that notification. There are no quick replies if you get messages or emails, but you can read messages on here. And likewise, you will receive phone calls on here, but you cannot answer them. Obviously, this has no microphone or speaker on board. If I hit OK, it'll open up a message and I can read uh, pretty much everything in that message. So if we go back, that is the last mode we have, and that brings us back to the home screen, but that's not the last thing this watch can do. Now, if we hit the run button on the left side, this will bring us into a run. There is only one workout mode on this watch, a little bit disappointing. It takes about 45 seconds to a minute until you're able to actually get uh, the GPS registered on here. So it takes a little bit of time. You could just start the workout without GPS and it'll let you know when it acquires GPS. So you can change this screen on the app and you can decide what you want to show up here. So right now, there are three different displays. If I hit the display button, it cycles through again for your workout screen. So currently I have heart rate, ascent, and calories. We can go and see split time, distance, and pace. We can go again and see lap time, lap distance, and lap pace. Or we can go back to the heart rate, ascent, and calories. Now, if we hit the run button again, it'll stop it and it'll ask us if we want to save it. So if we hit the mode button, it'll bring us back to home. And the very last thing I want to show you guys is actually the settings on this watch. So if we tap and hold the display button for about two seconds, it'll bring up the settings screen. And of course you can use the left two as up and down. So you can go down and navigate. So you have home time, world time, you can adjust your time, set up to four alarms on this watch. You can change the profile. So your weight, your sex, your, your height, stuff like that. So it can estimate calories better. You can have auto run detection. Auto run detection from my testing actually did not use GPS. Uh, so that was interesting. You can change the beeping if it's on or off. So this does have a small beeper inboard. Uh, you can change the light settings if you want it to auto wake. Whenever you lift the watch, the light turns on. Going down, we have vibration for notifications. So anytime the watch needs to notify you, you can turn the vibrating motor on or off in settings here. We can go down to pairing when you're setting it up with your phone, airplane mode, find my phone. That's a cool feature there. So we can go and execute that and my phone makes a cool sound actually. This watch comes with an app called G-Shock Move. It's specific to this watch so far. And it's honestly, I think it breaks down a little bit. As far as software goes, it's a little bit clunkier. It's a little bit harder to find the information I'm looking for. And it's not really very appealing when you're working in the watch, but it definitely shows you the stuff that you need to know once you figure out where to find certain things. So starting off on the home screen right here, there's three tabs on the bottom, home, activity, and more. Starting with home, it kind of gives you like a, it's supposed to be like a dashboard and it shows you the latest activity there. You can see just some quick insights about it. It's a bunch of zeros because it was just me starting a workout 10 seconds ago. Uh, but I can show you another workout over in the activity section, an older workout. You can set a plan. You can look at your VO2 max. Uh, you can look at your monthly goals, your total time working out and your life log. Uh, you could also customize home on the bottom and see what you actually want to show up there. So if we go into activity, going down, you'll see different activities we did. So this one is just a run on the beach uh, down in Virginia. And so it shows you a map, which I think is really nice, very convenient. 
And if we look at this, it shows us uh, the GPS is, as you know, you can tell, it's very accurate. It's showing us exactly what it looks like. Uh, so it's mapping us on the road on like a, a map view. But we could also look at this as a GPS view uh, to see an actual picture, an image of where we ran. And obviously, it's very accurate. It got all the turns right. It really did a great job on this run. And so seeing the insights there, it also shows you the mile markers and it's a heat map for your speed as well. Uh, it doesn't actually tell you that it's a heat map for speed, but that's what it is. So that's nice that it does that. Down below, it shows you all the information from your run, including your distance, your time, your pace, uh, your energy consumption. Uh, the energy consumption, I mean, that's always kind of iffy because it really depends on a lot of stuff. And as we go down, they can also, there's also a map down here or a graph rather showing your pace and your heart rate. This is not necessarily uh, my, my favorite uh, type of graph. It's kind of hard to see. I want to zoom in on this, but you can slide your finger around and it shows you uh, like information for each individual point. Um, and so that's basically all you're going to be seeing there. Now, if we go over to more, you can change your user settings. So about you, you can do that on the watch as well, or you can go to watch and actually change uh, some settings about the watch from the phone. So we can change like GPS, for example, if we want it to be continuous or if we want it to do more sampling, uh, you can change that. Your target heart rate zone, uh, your training face if you want that. So remember I said before, you have three different training faces and you can change what they look like for the top, center and bottom. You can change all that in here. I already did that and I think it, it honestly, I do like being able to do that. I wish more watches let you do that. Now, overall with this watch, I like the accuracy, I like the durability, and I love the battery life of it, but there are a few little drawbacks you should be aware of. So one of them is that this does not have any storage for music, nor does it have the capability of controlling music on your phone, and it also obviously cannot connect to Bluetooth earbuds to play music because it has no reason to do that. So if you are looking to go for a run with this and not just totally leave your phone behind, just understand that you won't be listening to music, at least not from your watch. Another drawback, as I mentioned earlier on in the physical tour, is that the watch is definitely very heavy, a little bit clunky, so it's gonna be hard to get your sleeves over the watch. And otherwise, when you're running, you're definitely gonna know that you have a pretty heavy watch on your wrist. I think that kind of goes with the long battery life and the heavy durability of this watch. So it makes sense if you're buying this, you're gonna be expecting that. A lot of people would even be looking for that, having a larger watch on their wrist. But overall, guys, in conclusion, this watch, I think it, it gets a really good score from me. I think it's a very specific group of people who are looking for this. It's not going to be your everyday user who just wants a smartwatch. Obviously, you're not getting any apps on this. It's not going to be users that are really looking for the lightest watch to really go on uh, you know, short adventures. But if you're somebody who wants to go off the grid, you want a really durable watch, you want a long lasting battery life, and you are you know, maybe a G-Shock fan, for example, uh, those are people that I think this watch is really going to satisfy and they're really gonna love having this watch. It's very durable. It really does exactly what you think it's going to do. So I think G-Shock uh, really hit their market on the head here. This is exactly what they said they were gonna do and they, I think they met their promise very well in my opinion. So overall, I'm impressed by this watch. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Is this a watch that you'd be buying or not? Do you like it? What do you not like about it? I wanna hear it from you guys. As always, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.